This video illustrates benefit cost analysis based on an example by Watkins. So, let's look at a proposed extension of Highway 101 in California. Without the extension, there will be 18,000 passenger trips per hour. With the extension, it increases to 24,000. The travel time drops from 50 minutes to 30 minutes. The value of time in rush hour is given at 10 cents a minute or $6 an hour. There are also values for non-rush hour. There are benefits of time saving for the old trips, trips that would have been taken anyway. That benefit is the rectangle of the consumer surplus analysis, or the value of time saved multiplied by the number of trips. For new or induced trips, we are estimating the area of the consumer surplus triangle, and then one half of the time saved multiplied by the number of new trips. This is the rule of one half. And this gives you the hourly time benefits for the old trips and for the new trips. And we sum that up and you get $7,000 for the rush hour period and $422 for the non-rush hour trips for a given day. And then we're going to have to sum this up over all the days and discount it. So multiply it across the year, 260 workdays per year, so 52 times 5, 6 rush hours per weekday. This is California Highway 101 which gives you 1,560 rush hours per year and leaves you with 7,200 non-rush hours per year. And you multiply those numbers that you have to get your annual time benefits. Safety can be monetized by looking at life saved multiplied by value of life. Suppose people accept an increase in the risk of death by 0.1% per year in return for $400 higher income per year. Then we can assume that a project that reduces the risk of death in a year by 0.1% gives a benefit to each person affected by it of $400 per year. The implicit valuation of a life in this case is $400,000. Thus, the benefit of the reduced risk project is the expected number of lives saved times the implicit value of life. 6 times $400,000 equals $2.4 million annually. Sum up the time savings and the reduced risk, and you get the total value of benefits per year of $16.4 million. Similarly, we have cost per year. How much do you have to lay out? In year zero, you buy the right-of-way. Let's say it's $100 million. Construction takes four years, $50 million a year. You don't have any construction costs from years five to 29. You also have maintenance costs every year. It's a $1 million. And then in year 30, you've got the salvage costs. So the road has a 30-year life. At the end of 30 years, how much is the road worth if we shut it down? Now, we might or might not close the road. But the other way of thinking about this is that we're selling the right-of-way to the future at that point for $100 million. And then the future can do what it wants. They would have to rebuild the road at that point anyway, or they can close it and turn it into a park so it's $100 million in the future. Now the key point is that $100 million in 30 years is a lot less than $100 million today because we're discounting it based on some interest rate. For this example, we assume that the interest rate is 2%, so we need to compute the present value of benefits which don't start from year five but then run from year 5 to year 29, and we have to work that out. So we have an equation for turning present value from, from taking an annual stream of money and the interest rate and the number of years and convert that into a present value. And we have a present value in year 5. Then we take the present value in year 5, which is the future value today, and have an interest rate and the number of years and turn that into a present value. Now this is just the compounding equation, 1 plus i to the n. How much money do you have this year earning 1% earning one percent on your interest? If you put in a dollar, 1 plus 0.01 to the 1 gives you a dollar and one cent next year. This is the same equation, it's just running them backwards and running them over many, many years. You can do this in a spreadsheet if you don't want to memorize the equations. The only equation that you have to memorize and you should be able to derive is the future value of the present value equals f, which is p times 1 plus i to the n. 1 plus i to the n times the present equals the future value. And it's earning interest, and everything else is just that equation in a different format. So what are we doing? Well, we have 26 years that we're getting some benefits on. We're getting $16.36 million of benefits a year at 2% interest for 26 years, we run it through this equation, we get a $329 million present value starting in year 5, and then we've got to take that to the present, va present value in year 5 and turn that into a present value today. And that's only worth $304 million. So that's the net value of benefits. We're doing the same kind of thing for costs. 
We have $100 million in year 30, and that's worth $50 million today at 2% interest. And we have the present value of the annual stream of cost of construction for four years, and that's equal to $190 million today. And we have the present value of maintenance costs of $1 million a year for 26 years, and that's equal to $20 million. And at $20 million in year five, we have to bring back to the present, which gives us $18.6 million. So again, you don't need to memorize the numbers of the equations. What we need to do is a little bit of calculation, summing up the benefits and the costs in present value terms. The difference between the two is $50 million. The ratio of benefits to costs is 1.2. So in this example, our conclusion is that we have a net present value that's positive, a benefit cost ratio that's above one, and a discount rate of 2%. If this is true, we should do the project, right? But if we redo the problem at an interest rate of 3%, we get a different conclusion. The answer is very sensitive to the interest rate. And this is really important. If you're financing it all, if you're selling bonds today to do this, you're not selling bonds for the benefits, but you're selling bonds for the construction costs and maybe for the maintenance costs. You can maybe guarantee what your interest rate is. But if you're not doing that, if you're paying this at a current dollar every year, interest rates may go up, they may go down. What looked like a good project at low interest rates is not a good project at high interest rates. And so for different projects, you want to consider the interest rate risk, and you do a sensitivity analysis. You test the answer at low interest rates and at high interest rates. And if it's good at both interest rates, that's great. If it's good at one interest rate and not at the other, it's a much riskier project. So that's something to consider when you're doing the analysis. There are other considerations here. The land, for instance. The market value of the right-of-way. We paid $100 million for it. We're a public agency. Public agencies don't pay property tax, so we mention tax. The public agency is getting a benefit from the tax, but the market may have had a different use for the land, which would have generated other public benefits. It's something to keep in mind that there's a cost to taking property out of the market sphere. If it were a private road and a private firm were doing this, then the private firm would be paying property taxes on the revenue that the land generated, and it wouldn't be much of an issue. But because of the public structure, the way we've constructed it, it doesn't pay property taxes to itself, and then we're losing some money to the public sector because of that. 